Coming up, the top 10 Kickstarter games of 2016. Why we love them, why we're worried about them, and most importantly, when you'll be able to play them. But first, a quick reminder about our biggest video of the year. The 10 best indies of 2016 will be decided by you, the viewers of Indie Former. To have your say, just take our survey link in the description. We'll be taking part two, and in fact, you can see my votes on the screen right now. Voting closes December 25th, and the final video will be out on December 31. For full details, check out our subreddit. And now, back to the top 10 Kickstarter games of 2016. The Wild 8 is a co-op survival game set in the Alaskan wilds post-plane crash. Procedurally generated survival games are a dime a dozen, but The Wild 8 got our attention with its emphasis on cooperative play. Food is shared, hunting is done in packs, tasks are divided, and communication is essential. Up to 8 people can play online at once, making it one player per survivor. Each survivor has a unique personality and abilities, such as medical student Mandy, whose crafted medical items are more effective. There's currently a free-to-play pre-alpha demo for Windows and Mac. Playing it, we found the game to be solid. It's also quite terrifying at times, with great atmosphere and suspense. We couldn't test online with other players, however, so that's the big question remaining. The initial timeline had a December release, but The Wild 8 will now be available Q1 next year for 20 American dollars on PC and then later on consoles. Wakey wakey sunshine! Hey kid, I said wakey wakey! It ain't polite to sleep during a cutscene. Huh? A cutscene? Dusty? You're alive? Whoa! What is this place? Rad Rogers is a 90s style platformer inspired by the irreverent wit and cartoonish nature of Conker. It was supposed to release in February next year, but Rad Rogers World 1 is amazingly already out on PC with the PS4 version to follow soon. Overall, Rad Rogers delivers on its promise of a 90s like platformer. The side-scrolling platforming and running gun fire is reminiscent of early 90s titles Jazz Jackrabbit and Rough and Tumble. Rad Rogers obviously provides a huge upgrade in the graphical department, bringing the retro gameplay into the realm of gorgeous 3D. The main knock on the game is it can get a little repetitive. This is further exasperated by the game only having 6 regular levels and 1 boss level. It is only the first world of the game, but that is all the Kickstarter promised and there is no word on future editions. Is she smoking a wooden pipe? Well, <coughs> it's my ex-husband for fuck's sake. Ugh, that's gross! Just go, get your ass out of here. They're not paying me enough for this shit. The other issue is that the game costs 12 American dollars as is. Paying that again for a second world seems unreasonable. All up, Rad Rogers is a fun yet short platformer with nice visuals and a great soundtrack. To Will, the gates whispered of adventure. But in the village of Rinoka, everyone screamed about gold. Moonlighter is an action RPG that blends adventure, nostalgia and business into one odd but cohesive whole. By day you play as a shopkeeper, setting prices, fending off thieves and making some sweet gold. By night you're a dungeoneer slaying monsters and grabbing loot to sell in your shop. With all your profits, you can buy new armour and weapons to have more lucrative expeditions and upgrade your shop to lure more customers. Everything is done in the name of capitalism. In July, Moonlighter not only hit its funding goal, but obliterated it, raising just shy of an extra $100,000 and unlocking all of its stretch goals. The most exciting stretch goal is a hardcore mode that'll make you lose all the items you find in a dungeon run upon death. Since the Kickstarter, a rival shopkeeper has been introduced to the village. Given the bulk of our concerns lies with the game's story, little details like this give us more confidence in Moonlighter. 
You should be able to play Moonlighter on PC this March with console versions to follow. If Wes Anderson made Earthbound, we'd reckon it'd look a lot like Knights and Bikes. The game follows the adventures of two young heroines, Nessa and Demelza, who have awakened ancient spirits that have then possessed the adults of their island homeland. As they cruise around in their tricked out rides rescuing the afflicted, the developers hope you experience the childlike wonder of exploration. It's a theme that appears to cover every corner of the game, from its big eyed characters that splash in puddles and throw frisbees to its cut out paper art style, Knights and Bikes expresses a genuine and pure sense of childhood. In November, we found out more about how co-op will differ from solo play. The high five mechanic allows two players to slap hands and recuperate health outside of battle, as well as boost camaraderie. As a very cute addition, players must sync the timing of their slaps for a high five to be successful. Knights and Bikes will wheel out April 2017. So it's kind of like if you imagine like if David Bowie went on a space journey and came back as Ziggy Stardust. That's, that's what the game's about. The Awful Escape of Francis Vendetti is a magical musical journey across the galaxy. A young boy living in the shadow of a famous uncle escapes to the stars to be someone else completely. His journey, captured by the game's picture book art, bright lights and its post-rock anthem made us immediately fall in love. However, The Artful Escape is the odd game out on this list. Whilst everything else got funded, The Artful Escape's Kickstarter campaign failed. We had the privilege to talk to the game's developers at PAX Australia and they gave us two pieces of good news. A. The game is still being worked on and B. It will most likely secure funding from an alternative source. Made in our hometown of Melbourne and incredibly beautiful, the Awful Escape is a sentimental favourite of ours. We'll be rooting hard for its success and implore you to do so too. August 2017 was the aim for release, but it's since been indicated that sometime 2017 is a more accurate guideline. Pray for the Gods is a game of giants made by a small team of just three American developers. Shadow of the Colossus is a big inspiration for the game and an easy comparison, but the differences between the two go deeper than a layer of snow. Developer Nomad Studios knows its limitations. They've only committed to having five godlike bosses at release. Despite raising 500,000 American dollars, the most by any game in this video, they have not wavered from their initial promise. It's not the sexy thing to say, but in a year in which Mighty Number no. 9 and No Man's Sky disappointed their fans, honesty is much appreciated. The content will still be considerable for a $15 game, and if people like it, the developers will add more content post-release. An unexpected influence on Pray for the Gods is DayZ. After having so much fun playing it, the Pray for the Gods developers have tried to embed the formula into their game. Players will be able to tackle the events in a non-linear fashion and scavenge for finite arrows. You can also choose how you fight a boss, and must be careful of the bone-chilling weather. Pray for the Gods seems as sensible and well thought out as it is enthralling. We'll be looking forward to getting our hands on it in 12 months time. Visage is a horror game not interested in the immediacy of jump scares, but rather the slow, unsettling infiltration of your mind. It begins with its setting, the familiar mundanity of a suburban family home. Like paranormal activity, the intrusion of the weird, unexplainable and sinister into this space is particularly disturbing. 
Building on this is a high level of production that has created a very real and atmospheric setting. Pick just one detail, like the air bubbles on the wallpaper and the lighting on it, and it's bound to be perfect. Another neat thing about Visage is that its events are random, creating a greater suspense for the player. Further testing has led the developers to add some non-random events to control pacing, but for the most part, the game will unfold unexpectedly. The developers have also recently announced that the game will have multiple endings, despite that stretch goal not being reached. Visage's story must remain a mystery, but so far, everything around it looks well made. We'll find out just how good it is Q2 next year. The fall. It's the last thing I remember. Memories tear apart my soul. Consumed by the endlessly burning fire. Agony came to Kickstarter in November, and its grotesquely abominable world is still fresh in our minds. Not only is its recreation of hell terrifying, but original. It is full of unique character design and settings. It's also an exemplary piece of game development, with every aspect of its presentation being polished and effective. This combination of execution and shocking horror made for a very convincing Kickstarter campaign that raised over 180,000 Canadian dollars. It's hard to spot a blemish with agony, but if we have any concern, it is what happens if the shock factor of all the gruesomeness wears off? There are 10 minute gameplay trailers on YouTube, but it's impossible to tell if the effect can be sustained for the entirety of the game. Like all crowdfunded games, it's a wait and see proposition. At the very least, we have faith in the credential development team and the work they've done so far. Agony will unleash Hell Q2 next year. Trying to bring the arena shooters of the late 90s into today's world of competitive online games, Diabolical is one of the most ambitious projects we came across in 2016. The good thing is that the game is being developed by former Quake pros that are dialed into the esports scene. They've recognised that community is essential and are offering the full suite of features come launch, including dedicated servers, chat channels, ranked matchmaking, in-game tournaments, detailed stats, profile pages, character customization, multiple maps, and full mod support. Whether players will take to Diabolical is ultimately up in the air, but if all goes well, Diabolical has the potential to break into the eSports scene and be 2017's Overwatch or Rocket League. We'll be watching it keenly, with a game planned to be available for 10 to 15 American dollars in June. Take shelter from the sun And grow in shade And walk among the trees Of plants we've made The rain Kickstarter gave our eyes many treats in 2016 But none are sweeter than Lost Ember The game is a story-driven exploration adventure Where you begin as a wolf looking for your place in the world the answer to all your questions lie in the city of Machu Kila, but the path there is yours to carve. If your journey ever becomes too one track, you can jump into the body of another animal and see the world from their perspective. Take flight as a bird, go underground as a mole, swim the seas as a fish, hike mountains as a goat and much more. The aim is to create this beautiful and surprise filled world that you can explore at your own pace without the impediment of obstacles like puzzles. It just has this great sense of adventure to it, a hint of mystery, and this great peaceful quality. It seems a bit like a walking simulator, but it really feels like its own game. Something that just hasn't been done before. This is in part the effect of stripping back a lot of video game conventions, and that is why we feel Lost Ember has such an apparent sense of adventure. We won't know how exactly Lost Ember feels until 2018. In the meantime, we'll just watch the trailer a dozen more times. That concludes our top 10 Kickstarter games for 2016.
Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time here on Indie Former.